Welcome to Real Physics. This is a series of short clips about useless fantasies in physics and today I'm talking about supersymmetry. Why I'm doing this? It's not so much for the sake of criticizing, but I think a lot of smart people are distracted and a lot of funding is wasted for these fantasies. I have basically three issues with uh, supersymmetry. The first one is it's based on something we do not understand, okay? There is a profound riddle, which is spin. Nobody can explain the very existence why we have this phenomenon in physics. And uh, in addition to that, we have uh, spin one-half particles and, and uh, integer spins, and they behave very differently in nature. Half integer particles, uh, they don't like each other, so to speak, and uh, integer spin particles, they can uh, well, stay in the same place. A famous example is Bose-Einstein condensation. This is very strange and this is very interesting, but it's very superficial just to invent names and describe it in, uh, instead of understanding. So you name the one uh, particle fermions and the other bosons. This is no advance at all, but now uh, this is the second issue I have with supersymmetry. It's just a dumb idea to postulate that uh, for every uh, fermion there could be a supersymmetric partner and for every boson there could also be a supersymmetric partner with the uh, respective different uh, spin, half integer and integer. And uh, I mean it's, it's very superficial and the motivation is okay you had once the discovery of positrons which were symmetric to electrons Okay, this is an interesting uh, feature of nature, but there is no reason whatsoever why this extra symmetry should exist. And not only this, uh, uh, it's not a symmetry, okay? Because, I mean, uh, proton, uh, positron have the very exact uh, mass uh, and electrons and this uh, exact same electric charge. But you don't have this with the supersymmetric partners. They postulate that they could have another mass. What does that mean? Uh, they say, okay, it's a symmetry breaking. And uh, yeah, you postulate a symmetry which is not symmetric, which is asymmetric. I mean, what kind of nonsense is this? Okay, and uh, this absurdity opens the floodgates to the third issue I have, which is methodological absurdity. Because if you don't predict a mass, uh, you can't do a reasonable experiment. Because that's what you observe. They predicted a mass range and there was nothing. So they made up their theories and said, okay, the, the mass should be, should be slightly higher. Nothing. And okay, we uh, again we change the theory and, and go to higher masses. This is a nonsensical approach to physics. And I mean, you could recount now this story for almost 50 years. It's, it's a long story of, of falsification that does not work. It's, it's not falsifiable anymore. And, um, and uh, there's some kind of also dishonest advertising with the dark matter particle, which does not exist. People who understand galaxy dynamics say that it's not resolved by one supersymmetric particle. So uh, the entire concept does not make sense. And I mean, it's, it's this very, uh, this, this toxic co-evolution of uh, experimental uh, giantism with also uh, new colliders and also uh, uh, new p new fantasies of particles, gluinos and fortinos and whatever. And, and this is a really a development that's really uh, bad for physics. And that's why I think, I mean, this is, this is one of the fields. It, it would be better if it not existed at all, uh, if you think about fundamental physics. There is a longer video but uh, about supersymmetry. If you're interested in fundamental physics, um, subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like this video.